It's over. It's finally over. I'm not doing a movie called Pulse. What the hell was that? Not doing a movie called Pulse. No, it's called Fatal Pulse! Fatal Pulse? Fatal Pulse? What the hell does that even mean? Oh, I have a pulse, but oh no, it's fatal. Therefore, I have to get rid of my pulse, but oh no, that'll kill me. Therefore, I need to have my pulse, but oh no, it's fatal. Therefore, this movie's title is stupid, so let's just dig into the steaming pile of pulse. So we absolutely know Fatal Pulse is going to be a quality production when it's brought to us by Celebrity Video and the Great Entertainment Group. Do they even actually have a celebrity in this? Joe Phelan. Guess we get to see some of that career he had before Dawn of the Living Dead. We start with this cardboard cutout of a real person named Jeff walking on this girl Stephanie for having the gall that want to sleep with him. Never gonna have this chance again. Uh, why? Maybe it's because Jeff's on the verge of discovering some things about himself as the sight of her undressing has him running out the door. Yeah! Get out! Walk away! Go ahead! Walk away, you jerk! Yeah, you tell that guy who's halfway down the street now to do what he did two minutes ago. She gets a knock on the door and naturally runs off to open it in her underwear. You feel alright? Feel better if you've had the sweet release of murder, weird person decked out in black. Come right in. To get away as quickly as possible, Stephanie crawls up the stairs while screeching constantly to maintain airflow. Wait a second, she can't die yet. She has another top taken off. Oh, never mind. The killer takes care of that important detail before using the force on her to make her stay in place and get strangled. He still won't talk to you. It's Lisa. He thinks I stole her from him. So what's eating him now? You and she broke up, didn't you? I want her back. She was the love of my life. Hi, afternoon. My mother's calling me. Great, I thought she lived in Phoenix. She does, but she's got a hell of a voice. Ha <laughs> ha let him die soon. And good thing he hid the bong behind his back, along with the smoke and smell, apparently. It does beg the question why he's doing it in there at all, since this is the professor's room. Stephanie! Oh my god, Stephanie! Were you ever married? Gently. Okay, I think we really know why he ran out on Stephanie now. But just still confused and accidentally bumps into Lisa. I want to talk to you, is that allowed? It's a free country. Yeah, I can feel the sexual tension between these two. Seriously, go back to the professor. I think you were close to showing an emotion in that scene. Why don't you give me a break? After trying to process what he meant with that robotic tone, she takes him to the library and after finding his lines in a book, tells her... I want you back. But then Brad shows up. Oh no, not that one. This is 80s gang Brad. And in case you're going to forget his name is Brad, they constantly remind you. Hi, Brad. Brad. Come on, Brad. For your information, Brad. Look, Brad. Brad. Come on, Brad. Brad is an ex of both of theirs. Well, in Jeff's case, they say an ex-friend, but no one's buying that. Hey, you're real cute too, you know? Brad is upset over the fact that it looks like they're getting back together, so tells them of Stephanie's death, then shows that book pile who's boss. Oh, hey, she's much better than Lisa. I'll ask her. What are you looking at? Oh, no, of course not. Looks like a rape murder, Jack. Wait, what? We see him kill her without any rape, so that must mean... Oh. 
Since it's just a crime scene, Jeff and Lisa burst onto the scene for the sole purpose of looking stunned, then Jeff making himself look guilty and taking off. We'll just have to find out for ourselves, Mr. Jeff Kramer. Which means they bring him in for questioning and ha <laughs> ha no, the police in this are far too incompetent for that. Then there's our really long scene of the girl who found dead old Stephanie dancing her grief out, I guess. And just when you think the movie forgot it was supposed to be a shitty slasher, not a shitty dance instruction video, her mother shows up to ask the obvious. What is it, huh? Is it Stephanie? She was even gonna take me to town to get my hair done. <laughs> and now my hair isn't going to get done. <laughs> Didn't we just have this scene? Cameron, I really need to get on that bathroom! What's eating you? About the fact that a friend of ours was killed right here in this house. She's dead. Doesn't that bother you? It didn't seem to be bothering you that much either until you couldn't get in the bathroom. The next scene is no dialogue, but it serves two points. To put suspicion on old Joe Phelan of being the killer, thereby establishing his complete innocence, and more importantly, that this girl has boobs underneath her shirt. Carol, we're going to a movie. You want to come? No thanks. I'm meeting Al in the music room. We're going to work up some lit. Cassie, what is it? I can't believe how everyone's trying to ignore Stephanie's death. Going to the movies is the only way to properly preserve her memory. My mom wants me to move back home. Wait, what? Seriously? That's not her mom? Are you going to? Are you going to? I guess not mom is trying to bounce out cardboard boy. What are you doing? Looking at you. What are you doing here? Looking at you. I felt really hurt when you started seeing her. What happened to me, huh? What happened to good old Lisa? It wasn't about Stephanie, it's about the professor. I mean, it had something to do with your I'm the center of the whole world attitude. Al, is that you? Come on, Elle, knock it off. Does he usually dress all in black and not answer you? Well, after not answering for a longer amount of time, she suddenly goes into scared mode and pushes a folding chair over. And when that doesn't work, she's out of options, obviously, and stands against the wall, utterly and completely helpless. Watch out here. Looks like she just got a cut off that sharp new release. Slicing her throat with the record! Her throat had been cut. She's dead. Really? Did she really die from getting her throat cut open? Dun dun dun! It obviously wasn't failing. Move in with me. No. Just for a little while. It's the most sense Jeff has made in this movie, so obviously Lisa ignores it. Whoa! Slow it down! Aren't you supposed to be responsible for the girls that live here? I inherited this barn from my aunt when she died. Girls included. And now I ain't responsible to nobody. I guess it's good you double negative that since you inherited the girls, along with your barn in the suburbs. I guess Joe and I better never do the fusion dance. Responsible to nobody! Oh yeah, take out that ponytail. Aw, oh, isn't that sweet? He left her a sign that he's the origami killer and a message in blood that says her family's dead. Hey, why the long face? Yeah, it's not like two of her friends and roommates just died. Well, things are going great for me. Jeff and I are screwing again. I think I might just get a personality of him this time. I just wish he'd stop calling me Professor. <laughs> Well, random cartoon noises aside, Jeff goes to see his comic relief buddy to get him to help him investigate the latest murder, since he's obviously on a higher plane of thinking. Plus, Jeff wants to go raise some more suspicion of himself. But that part won't get to happen, because the police just put their tape up and took off. She must have just conveniently fallen onto that chalk outline since her blood's on top of it. Oh god, I think I'm gonna puke! Good thing I brought Mark along so he can... You have to say fuck with everything? This fucking early and this fucking creepy and with this fucking hangover, you better bet your fucking life I say fucking with every fucking thing. Oh, that's why he was needed, his brilliant insight. Ernie, are you all right? Well, if you ever need anything, I'm here. 
Okay. <laughs> You're a little old for me, aren't you? Maybe in about uh, 17 years, I'll buy a house on eBay with a girl half your age. Well, she tries to show him she can be just like Renee from Dawn of the Living Dead by having a dream king strangled in the bathtub. Oh, wait, it's not a dream this time. I'm not sure if it's the strangling that kills her or the toilet cleaner she threw in the tub. Oh, well, I'm sure natural causes would have copped her soon anyway. Maybe you should go home until all this is over. No. And you still won't move in with me? All right. Maybe it's time we went looking for him. Are you serious? What did you want to stay around here for then? See how long your luck lasts? Hey, how about a game of horse? So if you fail to actually make your comic relief funny, well then you can just play a every time they enter a scene and that'll make them hilarious! Another girl got killed. Fuck. Mr. Cardboard and the Wacky Stoner, the mismatched cop duo, and- Oh wait, no, they're supposed to be friends. No, I don't buy that at all. Next we see the professor being very casual with chemicals. Professor Plum. Uh, no, thank you, Mrs. White. My girlfriend had a problem and I thought you two broke up. We go back to kill her. And that's a man who's just had his heart broken. Friends, are you alright? Well, I'm sure I am. I'm sure it's nothing serious. Maybe you ought to see a doctor. Would you have his fine chair? So the Scooby gang forms the brilliant plan of trying to catch Ernie in the act of murdering Lisa by telling him there's a heat problem in her room. Oh, good. You're here. Glad to be here. We're so casual right now. This thermostat for your heat, where is it? Um, shouldn't you know when it's your house? Phelan looks and sees it's set too high. Clearly a job for your landlord. Oh! I'd say that was a waste of time, but clearly it was a funny scene because the boing noise played. Guys, just go, please. You guys were wrong about him, so there's clearly no killer. So the only girl shown to actually care about any of her friends gets what she deserves. Oh, and the killer of course cuts her shirt off because we hadn't seen her chest yet. They then set the combination on their locker until it annoys her to death. The night Stephanie got killed, I remember seeing this guy and having this big argument with her. I was by the front door. Brad? Brad? What the hell? Don't give real information. What guy? His name's Jeff Kramer, sir. Jeff Kramer, I know that name. That's right, the one I definitely should have talked to by now. Has anybody else seen this Kramer kid hanging around any of the other girls? No. Well, of course you haven't. You hadn't been in the movie yet. I knew you'd be here. Why'd you do it, man? Okay, so you think he's the killer, so you go in the dead of night alone to confront him on it. The police are in this, and they're looking for you. I gotta see Lisa. I don't think that would be a good idea. What do you say? She don't want to see you, dumb fuck. What did you do to me? Who are you? What did you do? Another getting dressed scene! We see Feet coming up the stairs so it looks like it's the end of her, but no, she just goes to bed. I forgot, sometimes we need a scene just to establish their boobs before they die. How could you do that to me? Anyone but me! I love me! Did you kill them? Which one? And what about Stephanie, huh? She tried, but nothing happened. Oh, well, that's the important thing. You can kill her all you want, but just don't stick your dick in her, okay? Do you know what you're doing? Do you know what you're doing? You're supposed to be trying to make your line sound at least a little believable. You can show her, right, Jeff? Probably not. True enough. <laughs> So cut to some girl we've never seen before. Move it or lose it, buddy. But when they don't move it, instead she loses it and takes off for the nearest empty building because it's the safest place she could have gone. Of course, she didn't count on slasher killer's teleporting powers as they were already there waiting. While strangling her, they make sure. <laughs> yeah, of course, but it magically pops back on as she gets thrown out the window. The top getting ripped off was probably an important reshoot once they realized they forgot one of the most pivotal parts of the scene, but I couldn't afford to redo the whole window bit. Again, we get a scene establishing why Jeff and Mark are such good friends. Is that all you have to do is watch those stupid bullshit cartoons? <laughs> Boing! <laughs> now that was funny! Professor Caldwell? Sorry, uh, 
Clearly it doesn't work there. Anyway, she gets whipped cream to death, with a good amount being applied to her breasts as well, of course. Brad confronts Jeff again about being a murderer, but this time has a gang coming to back him up. Good thing he didn't just come with them from the start. Then again, they don't seem that helpful when they almost shoot him instead. So after a little chase scene, Jeff obviously runs to the professors, but Brad is already there? Hey, he's not the killer! He can't do the teleport! And he sits there gloating like it's a victory, sitting in an empty room with a supposed killer. <laughs> well, he is one now. Disconfirmed. Terminal. The professor then challenges Phelan to a cheese off. Isn't this... sorority? The fuck are you? Sorority? fuck are you? You get the fuck out of here. The professor cheats, though, by lightly tapping Phelan on the head, knocking him out. The pulseless disease it is said to be incurable and invariably fatal. Yeah, no pulse usually is fatal. It's probably why it's one of those things they check to see if you're alive or not. I'm sure I have found the proper formula to send the condition into remission. I don't know how or where I will end up after each formula trial. Yeah, so his cure for the pulseless disease made him go on death sprees. And horny death sprees, no less, because he usually took the time to take your tops off. Wow, look at his uncontrollable murder rage, obviously brought on by his treatment as he slowly plots how he should kill Lisa. Clearly this isn't really about Jeff and the Professor, when Jeff falls into tears on this revelation and the Professor's just been murdering all women Jeff has laid eyes on of late, he just had the murder order list flipped upside down, I think. What? Brad, stop cheating! You can't have the magic slasher killer powers when you aren't the killer! I found out who the, ki who the killer really is. Uh, I kind of flubbed, I kind of flubbed my line there. Should, should we redo it there or anything? No? No second take at all or anything? No? Okay. <laughs> You know, on second thought, Professor, it is kind of strange for you to randomly show up in the middle of the night. Captain Marvelous to the rescue! Jeff's so thankful his friend came to save his life and turn doesn't lift a finger to help him back, but it's okay because it's funny as silly music and sounds play as he gets a life beat out of him. <laughs> Jeff finds Phelan bleeding to death from his light tap on the head and leaves him to die as well. There's a little standoff with Jeff and the professor. Jeff has to give Lisa a not so subtle hint to hit him, giving him a chance to shoot him. Even a one punch Larson can't help this one. <laughs> Man, you have your silly mindless slashers, and then like 10 places below that, you get your shit like this! Geez, the people who made this sure like breasts. Either that or they're trying to cover up just like Jeff and the Professor, because the nudity is about as subtle as a stupid misplaced boing noise. Actually, I'm sure there was a boing noise during the nudie scenes as well, but it was cut as they decided they shouldn't break the fourth wall like that. And the deaths range from weak to what the hell. And the stupid professor knew something bad might happen while he's on his stupid magic pulseless disease meds, so obviously he didn't have someone else administer the meds to him, so he didn't go off and defy the deaths of a bunch of girls in one particular sorority house for no reason. That's one specific cold calculated murder death spree. Oops, looks like he's got some HP left, so he's going to need another bullet. <laughs> Ooh, the professor is still alive, meaning a ton of Fatal Pulse sequels! Oh wait, no, that didn't happen somehow. So Phelan was the real hero of the movie, just like in these reviews! Huh? Huh? Hey, what the hell are you doing there? <laughs> like a record, baby! Right round, round! Bro. I don't like this movie, he doesn't look too friendly, these monsters seem so fake, my nerves are gonna break, failures don't let me down, you need to be around, grab the running one up and blast that sing a new one, I think it's movie, I look shitty. What's you?